and you're more commonly known in China by uh, your Chinese name, Lao Hongban. Yeah. Lao Hongban, which hints at how often you shuttle between China and France. So, how do you feel about this nickname they've given you and the special kind of connection with the Chinese viewers? Well, I think it's the perfect name. I mean, I spent my life in flights, uh, in the planes, so. Uh, it's, it's a kind of uh, fate, <laughs> old flight is me. I'm not so old, but now more and more people call me Lolo because it's very easy to remember. So how does it feel to bring Don Juan to China for the first time? Well, you know, I'm, I'm really um, interested by all this kind of philosophy, like Confucius and yin, yin and Yang. I think it's a perfect symbol for this. Don Juan, for me, it represents the darkness, somebody who is really losing his, himself. Don Carlos is the light side, is the other one. The darkness can't exist without light, or the light can't exist with darkness. So it's the perfect uh, mix between the two characters. You know, in the past few years, French musicals have gained tremendous popularity among Chinese viewers. And you're part of it, and you witness, you know, this whole um, renaissance of French musicals. I'm lucky because I wasn't the first team who came in Asia in 2005, 2006. It was the first time that a musical, French musical, came in, in, uh, in Asia, Notre Dame de Paris. I was playing Phoebus. The first time I remember that people say, why French people are coming here for playing musical? I mean, English, no, uh, the American, no, the German, no, but French, they don't do musical. And then they fell in love with Notre Dame de Paris, and Notre Dame de Paris became a great success, still now. And I'm also lucky to have acting in different uh, musical like Notre Dame de Paris, Mozart, Opera, Le Petit Prince, Le Rouge et le Noir, Don Juan now, uh, Napoleon, I created a show also. Uh, I'm really lucky for this, but every show I can has a big impact on the, on the, the Chinese audience. So it's a great opportunity to me, for me to, to see what happens in 20 years. So I can see the difference and what is very funny that some young uh, girl come to me and say, oh, thank you so much. But you know what, my mother was a fan of you. Oh my God. <laughs> Not too old. So but, uh, no, that's, that's great to touch different generations like this. And what aspect of Chinese culture are you um, most fascinated about? Uh, I love history. I knew uh, that I, my ancestors uh, are coming from Mongolia. So I've got some Mongolian blood inside myself. I think it was Genghis Khan time, 700 years ago. He came through China, he stopped in the center of Europe, and my, my dad came from Hungary. So. It's the trrr, it's a logical, you know, uh, road, and then I come back now, 700 years later. And can you tell us more about, you know, any productions in the pipeline? And when you're an artist, you are, uh, of course, an interpreter on stage. You work for someone to give a role, but also what is very exciting is to create something. Transmit things to the new generation, work with uh, incredible guys. For example, I met uh, Ramin Karimlu in Shanghai last month. We were talking together and told me, oh yeah, uh, why not doing something in French together, a kind of, uh, you know, gala with uh, American, English, French. I met a lot uh, of great artists in, in China. I met Jason last month also. We tried to find a way to, to be on stage together and I think more and more we're going to, to create things like this, Chinese and French uh, actors together.